Welcome back, this is Part-Time Guardian. In this video, we're gonna talk about everyone's favorite subject, Gambit. Seriously, it's everyone's favorite subject. But to be honest with you, I think Gambit gets a raw deal because I think in many cases, especially when you're playing with LFG groups with just pure matchmaking where there's no mic, it can be very difficult to win with those groups. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can almost always win every match to be able to get whatever goals you're trying to get within Gambit, whether it's to get achievements, whether it's to get things knocked off your seasonal pass, whatever you're looking for, we can get it done for you. If you gain value out of this video, feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel and hop in my Discord. I really appreciate it. So again, in this video, we're gonna talk about how you can get better at Gambit. Again, Gambit's one of those modes that gets a lot of heat, gets a lot of hate. And personally, I enjoyed a great deal, but again, I'm careful if I'm playing with an LFG group, how I play through the game. Obviously if I'm on mic, I play a little bit differently because I can talk to folks, but if an LFG, I play differently than I normally would. And I'll walk you through some of those tips right now. First off, management of the early game is extremely, extremely important. I can't underscore how important it is. Many people, their first thing is they like to kill things. That's why they're in Destiny. So as soon as they're killing things, they're getting moats, they want to bank them immediately. They want to head straight to the bank, put them in, get the other team on defensive. However, what I would say is that's probably your first mistake. You definitely should get moats. So you should try as quickly as possible to get as many kills and get as moats as possible. But I would not take your moats straight into the bank first. One of the primary reasons for that is the stealing mechanism that exists within Gambit. So... If you don't know, when you, let's say you put your moats in the bank and you're only putting in, you know, five to get a small blocker. Someone goes on the other team, they kill that blocker, then they put two blockers in. As long as you have two or more blockers, you're going to actually drain the moats from the other team. So to give you an example, let's say you went ahead and you get, you put in 15 or 20 moats. You put in a bunch of blockers. The other team waited. As soon as they go in and let's say they do the same thing, let's say they put 20 moats in and they get that many blockers in. If they're able to keep the bank drained, in other words, keep those blockers, you can't kill them quickly enough, they can go from that 20 they put in to 40 because they've basically stolen all your moats. So again, my preference would be then, what you do is get your moats, get them as quickly as possible. Since you're in an LFG group, you can't talk to people. I would go in with as small a blocker as possible, either a small or a medium. Don't try to get too large. Sit near the bank and kind of wait for the other team. This is very similar to the old modes we had within Gambit Prime. Sit on the bank, help your team on the other side. So usually you'll be able to see the other side and be able to still kill ads and be able to help them get additional moats so they can put them in the bank. But your main job is to sit on the bank and make sure you're killing the blockers that they show up. Do it as quickly as possible. Once you get through a phase where they've put a number of their moats in, they've sent blockers across and you've killed them, wait for your teammates to come back. And when they put their moats in, Put them in with them, even if it's a small blocker, because I know small blockers seem like they're useless. However, if someone sent a large blocker or medium, you sent a small, those will actually shield the bigger ones. So again, don't wait for a large one. You put either a medium or a small in at the same time. I would try to get three blockers if possible. You could do it with two, but if you do it with three, that makes it more difficult. Two, usually someone can knock off one fairly quickly, especially if you send a small. With three, it gets a little difficult right? Because you have a lot going on. People are trying to do things. And again, you're in LFG groups. You're not dealing with people who are on mic. So that allows you to make sure that you can guaranteed get those moats from the other team. So first off, you're going to put your moats in, you're going to progress towards primeval, but you're also going to steal the moats from the other team. It's very, very important. And that's what I would recommend for that first phase of the game. Once you get past this phase, you're in the mid phase of the game. And typically what's going to happen here is you're going to continue to get moats and continue to try to send blockers. Again, I would try where I can to do the same thing, right? If you could sneak out and get another blocker, that's great. But your primary role at this point is to block the bank. You don't want to get to the point where they're stealing your moats back because you get greedy. Some people say, hey, I want to invade. I want to do this. And if, you know, if they have like, if you have three or four blockers on the bank, feel free to invade because at that point you have time to do that. If you don't though, you run the risk of going across or even going and getting additional moats and watching all your moats get drained because they put three or four blockers on the bank. Usually around this in mid game, Typically when people send those first few sets of uh, blockers through, you're gonna start to get invaders. So I'm gonna help you now kind of talk through how you deal with invaders. So if you're also the person that's blocking, again, you're still using a scout rifle or a sniper or something to help the team deal with ads on the other side, right? You're still assisting. Your primary job because you're doing this is also deal with the invaders. So what I would do is whatever map that you're in, I would play more Gambit so you familiarize yourself where the different spawn points are 
and try to engage the invader as quickly as possible. Again, sometimes you can do that near the bank if it's a smaller map. Sometimes you may have to actually go out and get them. I would recommend whatever builds you feel comfortable and whatever weapons you feel comfortable, again, that you would use in PvP. So use things where, you know, for instance, on my hunter, sometimes I'll go with smoke so I can hide a little bit as I'm engaging the invader. Don't be shy about taking some of the heavy. I know in many cases the heavy is needed for invading, and that's true. But again, keeping the invader from taking all your moats away is also really important. So use whatever you're comfortable with. You know, a lot of times, if you're doing from long range, something like a rocket launcher or a sniper is really helpful. If you're close up, obviously in those cases, a shotgun, a fusion rifle, even a, you know, grenade launcher, like uh, something with that's a breech loaded, those can be helpful too. But again, those are the sort of things. Do whatever you're comfortable with for dealing the invader. And if nothing else, waste the invader's time. Make him run around the map. Make him engage with you, right? Try to stay around live and try to keep him off of your other players. At this point, if you've done a good job of managing your blockers and managing the invaders, you're probably getting towards the um, end of the match. Now, at this point, if you're this close, you can free yourself up a little bit to invade if you want, if to help out a little bit, but don't get too cocky because, again, you want to make sure that you're protecting the bank and getting to that primeval phase. And so let's talk about that primeval phase. So during the primeval phase, um, again, because I combined everything as I got into this year, it's a little bit different than both of the individual gambit modes worked historically, but it's a combination of the two. So basically you have envoys and you have primevals and you have ads in those areas. You don't want to try to go after the primeval immediately. You want to try to neck out the envoys as quickly as you, as you can. Those envoys, as you kill them, they show up in pairs of two. They actually get a buff against damage for the primeval. So feel free to use whatever. They always have void shields. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Any weapon, if you have a void super or something like that. Again, some people will feel like it's overkill, but again, getting when you're in the primeval phase, getting in and killing the primeval as quickly as possible is really important because once you get to that phase, the other team has free reign to continue to send blockers at you and continue to mess you up. So that's why it's important to get through it as quickly as possible. So I would get rid of those first envoys as quickly as possible. And then again, I would try to clean up ads. I would try to do some damage to the boss, right? Don't use everything that's heavy but try to get as quickly as possible at next phase, get your next two um, envoys at that point. And once you get those, you're gonna have a four time buff. At that point, that's probably the time to start melting the boss, right? Try getting him down. It depends on what weapons and how the match is progressing, but that's when I, I would. Obviously you can get to six times, but usually once you get to six times, at that point, the match is almost completely over and you're pretty much almost done. Keep it up, do what you can against the primeval, use supers, use heavy, anything you can and then you'll win your match. Again, this is gonna vary depending on the match you're in. Some things are situational, right? You might have someone invade at a time you weren't expecting. You might have a situation where you have to come back from being behind, so you can change things up. But if you follow these and really be disciplined, again, as the person who's paying attention to the bank, who's paying attention to the Vader, who basically lets the other people do the easy job of getting moats, put them in the bank, you'll guarantee yourself that in most cases, you're gonna win and you're going to be able to advance yourself through infamy and get all the achievements, all the things that you're trying to get done within Gambit and make Gambit a less painful experience. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is some of the weapons you can use. I won't get into, into builds. I might do some builds in the future and post those. But again, if you're gonna be doing this mode, you're gonna need things to kill things quickly. So typically what I like to run is something like some sort of good heavy, you know, I'll run Anarchy, that's good for damage maybe a good rocket launcher or something like that, or, or maybe a grenade launcher or something like that. That helps out. The rocket launcher also can help you dealing with invaders. So that's where that's helpful. Then you're gonna probably wanna split yourself up between something that's short and long range. So typically I'll have a scout rifle or a sniper to be able to help and assist the teams and also deal with invaders. And then I'll usually, for my other thing, I'll either use a shotgun or a fusion rifle or maybe even a grenade launcher. But I think fusion rifles work pretty good. And actually the null composure from this uh, current season is actually a good fit for that because it's void. And that's the video, guys. Again, if you follow these tips, if you do these day in, day out when you get in the gambit, A, you're gonna win more matches. B, it's gonna be a more enjoyable ex experience while you're in there. And obviously you can do other things, you can try other techniques, but if you're playing with just random groups, this to me is the easiest way to guarantee yourself a win. Again, that's the video. I really appreciate you guys watching it. If you got value out of it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and hop into my Discord. Also, check out my community tab on my YouTube because I just got to 1,000 subscribers, so I have that now. I've been running polls about what videos to do next, so I'd love to hear what you guys would love to see next. And I'll see you, Guardians, in the Tower.